How you doing? I'm Matt with 731woodworks.com. Today, we're building this super simple DIY day bed. Two sheets of plywood is all you need, simple tools, and you can build it yourself. Let me show you how we did it. Stay tuned to the end of the video. I'm gonna go through a full cut list of this bed, exact dimensions you need to cut each piece to make this bed for a twin size mattress. If you're looking to build a full queen king, you have to adjust accordingly, but this is for a twin size mattress. Let's get started. Starting out, we had to figure out what size we wanted. We're building a twin size bed. So we know that our mattress is 75 inches long, 30 inch, 38 inches wide. And so the first thing we're gonna do is cut out the back of the bed. And to do that, we went ahead and measured out 75 and three quarters of an inch because the headboard is gonna take up that first three quarters of an inch, which leaves us a 75 inch uh, long bed. And what I've done, I've got a Craig Rip Cut. Uh, if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I use this a lot. Uh, it, you can cut up to 24 inches. I know the back of the bed is going to be three foot tall. So I went ahead and measured over three foot and I made a mark. And I've set that Craig Rip Cut to cut the left side of that line, which will leave the right side of this three foot. I'm going to cut all the way down to 75 and three quarter. And then once I do that, I'll cut that end piece off. So we're going to cut a three foot by 73 or 75 and three quarter inch. If you don't have a Craig Rip Cut, just get a good straight edge so you can get a good straight line. The way this Craig Rip Cut works, you can adjust it up to 24 inches. This is basically an edge guide. It's going to run along the factory edge and cut us a nice straight line. So now what we're going to do is cut the headboard out. We know that we want it 36 inches to match the back and we're going to make it 38 inches wide because it's going to sit inside of the back. So we know that's going to put down 38 inches for our mattress to sit on. So I'm just going to use a Craig Rip Cut, same method. I'm going to cut the 36 inch piece first by taking off one foot off this side or a little, little less than one foot. We're allowing for that blade and then I'll come across and cut this piece out and we'll leave this drop that's going to leave that section down there this one foot strip as a spare so we can make our frame and our slats out of it. let's do that so what i've done i've just set up a straight edge that's going to keep me so i can make this a 38 inch cut measure class cut ones. so i got this straight edge uh, it's just aluminum straight edge so i'm going to make this cut to that line that I've already cut on the 36 inch mark and then make sure you set something underneath I've got two saw horses under there to catch this drop so it doesn't fall on the floor I hope it doesn't fall on the floor and when you're cutting make sure you got your blade on the other side of the cut line so that you don't cut it too short <laughs> if I didn't cut it all the way through I'm gonna take the flush trim saw and cut the rest of it and the reason you do this part is so you don't have giant cuts into the other because if you go ahead and cut all the way through to, to make it to where the bottom side is actually cut, you'll wind up cutting into your, your drop pieces quite a bit. So just to save material. So this is the headboard. So now we're gonna cut the footboard out. I wanna make it, we're gonna make it 12 inches tall by 38 inches wide. I'm gonna go ahead and use my table saw to rip it 12 inches. And then I'll use my miter saw to cut it to length at 38. I forgot to mention that the footboard, the 12 by 38 inch piece, I cut off the drop off the first piece, of, the first sheet of plywood that I used. So now we've got the basic structure kind of cut out. We've got the back, we've got the headboard, and we've got the footboard. And we're going to go ahead and put those three pieces together so we know what to do. That was Miss 731 suggestion, and I liked it. Out of this long drop, it's like 75 and something. It's 75 and three quarter. I'm gonna cut this, I'm gonna cut a three inch strip out of it for our front stringer that goes across the front of the bed. And that's what we're gonna be able to attach our slats to and make everything squared up so we can assemble the bed before we start putting our slats in there. I'm gonna rip a three inch strip and then I'm gonna cut it 74 and three eighths inches long so that it fits between the footboard and the headboard. And it's taking into account uh, those thicknesses. Let me show you what I'm doing. 
Now it's time to use or time to make our pocket holes. That's the pocket hole joiners, how we're putting this together. I've got a Craig K5. You can use the K4. I think Miles Craft makes one. I'll drop a link in the description below to all the tools and supplies that we use in this video if you want to check those out. Uh, Craig also makes an R3, which is a lot less expensive. That's what I started out with. It's the same type of pocket hole jig. Uh, it's very similar. You have to clamp it on. It takes a little more uh, planning to use that because you have to clamp every one. This one, it just, it's got a clamp built in. You just set it to the depth and you make your pocket hole. So I'm going to pocket hole this piece and my footboard and my headboard. And then we'll attach everything before we put our slats in. So now it's time that we're going to assemble the basic frame of the bed. Wood glue, I use Type Bond 2. You can use Type Bond 1, Gorilla Glue, uh, Wood Glue. That helps everything. Once it's dry, it makes it more solid. So I've got an inch and a quarter pocket hole screws. Again, link in the description to all these products. I'm going to put wood glue on this edge that joins in. Make sure this piece is flush on the outside because it's your footboard. And then the, it's imperative that the bottom is flush so that it sits flat on the floor. If, and you need a flat surface to assemble everything on. If you don't have a flat surface, find one. Because if it's uneven like our garage floor slopes, you'll line up with the rickety bed. You don't want that. What I typically like to do is I'll get the bottom one in there, start it a little bit, and then I'll move up to the top, start that one, and then we'll uh, screw in the rest of them. So the reason I put the pocket holes on the inside instead of the outside was so that you couldn't see them from the outside of the bed. Now you're always welcome to put them on the, in, on the outside if you want to plug them or if you don't mind the pocket holes. And so that's what we're doing here. Uh, it's a little bit better to come from the outside in, that way you get more meat to grab onto. And, but this will work too. Now we're going to go ahead and put the headboard on and then the stringer. So on this end, you'll notice that the pocket hole screws are on the outside. You'll never, well, in our room, you'll never see this side because it'll be up against the wall. So we decided to go ahead and put them this way for that added strength going all the way up. Again, on this one, you can put them from the inside if you want. That's totally up to you. Make sure you get your wood glue on there. Main hand thing here again, you're gonna make sure that bottom is flush. Outside edge is as flush as you can get it. Craig makes a clamp that actually goes into this hole and holds that. I've never picked it up for whatever reason. Before we got everything put together, we realized that this is probably going to be too big to fit through the door, so we went and measured, and sure enough, it is if it's assembled. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and attach the runner or the stringer so that everything is attached. I'm not going to glue this right now, I want to go ahead and attach it. Then we're going to sand it lightly with 120 grit sandpaper just to get those rough edges off. And then we're going to paint. And then I can, after everything's painted and dried, I can take this piece off. We can take it into the room and then reassemble. So that's something to keep in mind. So that's what we're going to do now. I've measured up 12 inches. The top of this will be uh, at 12 inches to match the footboard, which is 12 inches tall. So while I got this laying on its back, this is the bottom, that over there is the top. We know that there's going to be slats running across here, right? We're going to make those out of uh, plywood also. I think they're going to be, they'll be 37 and 5 16 inches uh, long by about 2 inches thick. This is 3 inches and then I'm going to take a 1 inch strip and run it all the way across here same length as this board and then i'm going to glue and brad nail that to the bottom so that my slats will rest on top of it and that'll give us some support on the back side that glue and brad nail is all you'll need to actually hold the weight uh, once that glue sets it'll be there forever and ever so i'm just going to go ahead and cut out a one inch strip and go ahead and put that on there since i've got it laying on its back it'll be a lot easier to do now than versus later uh, just make sure that the top of it is more is two inches uh, below the top so that you have plenty of room for your slap. So we'll measure down two inches. 
and the top of that one inch strip will be right there. So I know my wood, my slats are going to be two inches thick because that's how thick I want them. You make them however, however thick you want them. The stringer's three inches, so I didn't want them sticking down past that. If you wanted them thicker, you can make your stringer thicker, make the slats thicker. Plywood, when turned on edge, is extremely strong anyway, especially when it's uh, getting some thickness to it. So two inches, I think, should be enough. Not an engineer. Do that at your own risk. So I'm gonna go ahead, I've measured up 10 inches from the bottom. That leaves me two inches up to the top of the bed frame. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this on at 10 inches and then my two inch strip will lay in there like that. And that'll give me plenty of room for my stringers. So I've decided to put this at nine and a half inches from the bottom. And that'll give me a two and a half inch a slat. And I think that will be a little bit more substantial uh, in case I get heavy and then I don't have to worry about it falling through. So nine and a half inches from the top is where the top of this uh, support board is going to go. Glue and brad nails. Uh, I think these brad nails are like an inch thick, inch and inch or so. And just make sure they're not an inch and a half so it doesn't bust through your, your wood. And so I'm just going to do this, put glue on the back side of this board and then go ahead and brad nail that on. The brad nails aren't there for structural anything other than they're just going to hold this on there until the glue dries. Once that glue dries, I mean, you you basically laminated this to that board. It's not going to come off. So I've made marks, four marks, one on each end and two about halfway between those. Just start at one end and tack it on there. Got any excess glue squeezing out, you can go ahead and just rub that off with a finger or a rag. So I cut this piece 37 and 5 16 inches. It's going to sit on top of that one inch piece. It's going to be flush with this piece. Don't glue it to this piece because we've got to take this piece off to get it into the house. Remember that. So just going to go ahead and put some glue on there. Basically, it's just attaching your first slat to your headboard instead of uh, attaching it to the back and then the stringer. Just use a straight edge to line everything up on the top. So we're going to wipe this down with a damp cloth. I'll take that granite gray with my Home Right paint sprayer. I did a review on that home right paint sprayer. If you want to check that out, I'll put a link in the description to that video. It's a pretty good paint sprayer for 100 bucks. So we're going to take that out in the yard, put it on some blocks, and paint it gray. Once that's dry, we're going to paint it biscuit white, and then we'll distress it like we've done before on a lot of our other projects. It's going to match our room really nice. While we let that dry, I'm going to go in and go ahead and start cutting those slats. So we got two coats of gray on there. I'm going to not be zoomed so zoomed in. We got two coats of gray. Let that second coat dry. Then I'm gonna paint that next coat biscuit white, probably two coats of that, and then we'll start distressing it with some sandpaper on our orbital sander. If you're going to just paint it one solid color, I would suggest primer, a good quality primer, like Sherwin-Williams or something at Lowe's, Home Depot, something quality, and then put your top coat on a good quality top coat. That gray I use is from Walmart. I don't like Walmart paint, it's kinda of not that great. But if you're gonna just use it as an undercoat, Works perfectly fine and it's pretty inexpensive. My top coat will be Sherman Williams Biscuit White in Pro Classic. It's pretty expensive, about $70 a gallon. You don't have to go that expensive, but it's a good, durable, washable, water-based paint. So that's what we're going to use. So while I was out there painting Miss 731 Woodworks, was in here drilling pocket holes, and we've got pocket holes on each end of all of our slats. I'm going to go ahead and sand those 120 grit, just a light sanding to get those uh, burrs off of there. If you've got a really sharp uh, Craig bit, it won't do that, but as they get older, they start doing that a little bit. And then on the top side, just going to knock that edge off so it doesn't cut the bottom of the mattress. And so we'll just, we'll just 120 grit, get that sanded. And yeah, we've both got tons of splinters from this stuff, so keep that in mind. I had to go procure my hat. Uh, follically challenged people have to worry about their head burning in the sun so try to prevent that. I'm fixing to go and put biscuit on there now, the biscuit white, two coats. I'm going to spray one coat on there, let that dry 30, 45 minutes, an hour, whatever it takes. Put that second coat on, let that dry. 
then we'll be ready to distress the whole thing. Distressing won't take long. It's just the hand sander, the overall sander with 120 grit sandpaper till the grain pops through like we want it. And then we'll take and move it into the house, start getting everything set up. It's coming along. All right, we got that basic frame painted, two coats of biscuit white. Uh, once that dries, we're going to distress that and then we're going to take it in the house. So remember, we're going to take off this stringer uh, so we can get it in the house, this piece. Once we get in there, we'll start assembling everything. Let's distress. All right, we got it in here. We're going to go back and reassemble this. I'm just taking the screws out. Should just go right back together. So I was actually a little bit concerned about how structurally sound it would be on this corner. I don't think it would be a problem much, but just in case, I went ahead and made a, just a, this piece is four inches, this is three and a quarter, and I put pocket holes in there, and I just made a square, or a right angle, and uh, glue and screw this together, and then just sanded it down a little bit. And the purpose of that is, I'll set it on the inside of that corner, and I'm gonna glue and brad nail that in, and I think that will give it enough structural integrity. I won't have to worry about those corners coming loose since it was only pocket holes holding it. I think that's a better idea. And you won't see it because it's behind your stringer. Once those corner pieces are in, I'm gonna start putting my uh, slats in, and they're just pocket hole screws in. Got uh, two pocket holes on each end, and we're gonna just lay those in there, lay on that board back there, and tie directly into this board up front all the way across, we'll get our measurements and we'll be rolling. Because we don't plan ahead, uh, I realized that once it was in here and everything was assembled, I needed a brace for the middle just to help support on this outside edge mainly uh, in the middle. So what I've done is I've just, I took a piece of scrap, held it up on there and marked it how uh, far it needs to be. I drilled some pocket holes in there. I'm just gonna go to the middle. It should be about 37 and a half. So this is pretty much gonna be the middle board. I'm just gonna stick it under there at the height or the spot I want it to be. Get approval from the boss. Hey baby. Yeah. Because we're in a tight space, we got this right angle attachment. That's just a DeWalt right angle attachment. It helps get in those tight spots. Is this a good spot for, or do you think it needs to be further out? You mean closer to the edge? Yeah. Is it in the middle? This is this clip for. I think it needs to be closer this. out. Out a little further? Yeah, I can paint it if need be. You know? Yeah. But I think it needs to be where it, it's going to offer the most stability. Right is that better? I think right there is good. Okay. You don't want it too close. <sighs> so I want to give you a full breakdown, but of the cut list of this twin size bed frame. If you're making a full size, you'll just have to adjust those measurements to the size of a full size mattress. This piece is 38 inches wide, 12 inches tall. Back of the bed, 36 inches tall, 75 and three quarters inch long. The headboard, 38 inches wide and 36 inches tall. This one inch strip inside here is set at nine and a half inches. These slats are two and a half inches wide by 37 and 5 sixteenths uh, deep or thick, you know, wide. And then I put them every five inches on center except that last one, and it worked out to be just a little bit more. And there's one that is glued and tacked on each end. 16 slats total, two and a half inches by 37 and 5 sixteenths. <clears throat> and for the face piece, the face piece is 74 and 3 eighths inch long by three inches wide. It's an extremely simple project. Two sheets of plywood is all you need. It's a pocket hole uh, ability, whether it's pocket hole jig or whatever. Uh, this makes a, a nice clean look because you don't have any screw holes out here 
if you did have to do it that way, that's perfectly fine if that's the look you're going for. But I, I recommend getting you a, a pocket hole jig, either the R3 or the K4 or the K5. I'll drop a link in the description to my the one I use, which is a K5. joiner for this to make it super simple super clean looking and then I also use my table saw circular saw stuff like that so uh, minimal tools to, to build this and it's extremely easy if you're a beginner uh, maybe a two-day project if you're an intermediate woodworker about seven or eight hours we've got seven hours in it but an hour of it was us ciphering on how we wanted to do it so hey thanks for watching don't forget to check the description down below for the links to the tools and supplies used in this build if you want to support this channel uh, below the video is some cards with t-shirts and stuff on it. If you'll buy one of those, it helps support the channel. Don't forget to share this on your social media. If you do that, I'll give you a virtual fist bump. If you click this card right here, that's... <laughs> if you're interested in watching more of my videos, DIY projects, click this card right here. Take you right to it.